Spirit, that he will not see death before seeing the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Peter, in Matthew 16, 15, I'm going somewhere with this. The Lord asked a question. Who do they say that I am? Peter answered, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. The flesh, flesh and blood did not believe that to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I want to say to you that this is evidence in the scripture and there's evidence in our life that God is speaking and ministering to us every day. Yeah. He's given us revelation every day. Yeah. He's telling you, the reason why you're here is because God spoke to you. Mm -hmm. God spoke to you. God moved by the Holy Spirit and called you to him and you accepted him. You said, today, I hear you, Lord. Sometimes we forget that, that the Lord has already spoken to us. He has already told us who he is. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is something to rejoice about, to call back on that, that God has already spoken to you and you know exactly who he is because you are here, you are a Christian, you are saved because of that voice today. Amen? Everybody in the house is Christians. We already know the love of Jesus. Remember that in our prayer life. Amen? Amen? Amen. Can I talk to you about the Holy Spirit? Amen? Amen. Jude 1 20. This is this is this is important. But you, beloved, build yourself up your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. I'm going to talk about praying in tongues. But first go to 1 Corinthians 14, 2, 5. Oh wait, I'm sorry. I'm a good pass. 1 For he who speaks in tongues does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. But he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish all who spoke with I wish all of you would speak with tongues, but even more that you prophesy. For he who prophesy is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets. The church may receive edification. I want to talk about this. I want to take my time with this. When pastor's up here, I begin to pray in tongues because I understand that the word he shares must be right. But it is important that it's accurate and on time. Amen? Amen. But it loves the Holy Spirit is speaking to me to speak. It needs to be at a, at a voice, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's edifying the spirit man within me. And I'm praying affecting the spiritual realm. Amen? Amen? This is part of why he asked to change this. Amen? When we're falling out before the Lord in spiritual time, I pray that we are doing it at home. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. That we are that bold in our prayer life mm -hmm. at home. Yes. Because that spiritual tongue is building you up and opening up doors for your commun communion with Christ. Amen? Yeah. When we are before the church, this is why I challenge you. Come up. Did, did the Lord give you the interpretation? Because we are in front of the congregation. So they don't understand. We don't want a guest to think that we're crazy. No, if we're speaking in tongues and it's loud and it's boldly, then that means there's an interpretation and it's for everybody in the room. Amen? And that is important. It's important. But it's very important that you pray in tongues continuously in your private life because it's doing something within you and with your communion with God. Amen? This is how you change. 
from merely just knowing and accepting Christ to having that personal relationship by praying in tongues because it's mystery, because it's your spirit speaking with God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And it's better than anything we can speak in our head. Yeah. Yeah. But corporately, I love this. I was listening to um, the old, it was uh, Chuck, the one that passed away, Chuck, Chuck Smith. Chuck Smith, they still have it on syndication. And he was, he was talking about um, evangelistic churches confuse it. We cannot confuse it. Amen? If you're prophesizing, amen. Prophesy. Tell that truth. Share that truth to that individual. If the Lord has given you a word, you speak it with boldness and know that it came from God. Yeah. Amen? amen? But if you're speaking in tongues and there's not that interpretation, that was meant for you. Yes. That was meant for you. Yeah. Amen? Use that. Build upon that. But the difference. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. There is prophecy and there's building in the spirit. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? Prophecy, building up your inner spirit yeah. so that you can commune. Doors are open yeah. for you and God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. I have been reading, the Lord has just told me about reading, getting out in front of the TV and really start to spend some time reading. If I'm being there watching all my sports, y'all know I love my sports. I need to spend some time reading. Another book I was reading on the plane, Jesus in Beijing. Thank you, Lord, for helping me remember the title. Jesus in Beijing. There's a, they have, it's kind of like that more modern book you were reading. They, they, they have, they are not allowed to be Christians. They die or are in prison for Christ for decades. It's only a little bit better now. They would go to prison for seven, eight, nine, twenty years and come out and still build another house church, they call it. <laughs> Is that crazy? Yeah. That's talking about being all fire and living with God. They would feel guilty if they agreed to do something because they didn't want to spend as much time in prison. They would spend a little bit of time in prison feeling guilty about that decision and coming out even more on fire for God. Yes. One of the stories I wanted to ch share is because we do hear from God and sometimes it's just a little nudge. One of the ladies that, uh, that was running the um, house church, her brothers did not understand her relationship with Christ. Continued to be on fire for Christ in a little village, just continued to be on fire for Christ. In there doing, in her home, doing a regular, everyday household wash dishes or something. The Holy Spirit was on her about going to go check on her nephews. She's like, okay, I'm sure they're fine, but finally she took that function. She started casually walking to the village well. And then from afar off, she heard the oldest nephew crying out. And then of course she began to run. And then she began to pray like, Lord, oh Lord, I'm so sorry that I did not listen. Please do not take him. Take me instead. Don't take him, Lord. Just a simple like prayer, just passionate prayer. She got to walk to the well and they heard a little movement in the water so they dropped the rope. The young man was lifted out. And by this time, his father's at the well. He said, did you swallow too much water? And the young man said, no, the man was holding me up. Oh. Hallelujah. I want to know where that young man is today. <laughs> but we all have had that kind of moving experience in our life. We just easily forget about it. God has moved that way in each and every one of us. God has blessed us in a way where he's speaking to us and moving in us and saving our life and blessing somebody else. How many know they don't mess with about, mess with her about Jesus anymore? You know, amen? Yeah. That, that story just touched my heart so much. But I know that's true in every case. God pulled you out of something that was terrible. 
tearing you apart. That made you ugly. That made you not worthy. But we are. Because we have his grace. Allow it to move us. Allow ourselves to take time before the Lord. Settle our spirit. Focus on Jesus. Meditate on his word. Read his word. Ask for understanding. Why, write down those spontaneous thoughts. Ask God, is this from him or is this my own words? Amen. Amen. Jesus, am I hearing from you right now? Help me to be obedient. Help me to walk according to what you just shared with me. Help me to be different. I want to be different. Nicole spoke a word over me. Um, and she, she said afterwards, oh, don't be sensitive. I wasn't saying you're doing that right now. I was like, no, that's a powerful word. Her word was to me, don't get caught up in idle conversation. It's real easy for doing. You guys know I like to talk. I just be talking. So I, I, I work, I talk, they know all, all about me, personally, privately, whatever, I just talk. But I need to be careful of the conversation I'm having. Because I am different. Amen? I'm okay with that now. I wasn't before. I'm okay with that now. You have to get to a point where you are okay with being different. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Okay with being different. If they start talking silliness, you just got to walk away. I didn't know what this conversation ain't for me. Oh, you just went, you, you, no, not this one. Amen. I'm going to go right on in there and do my job. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that word, because I remember. I, I, if I have to put it on a post and put it on my computer, walk away from my, sometimes we got to do that. Yes. Until we are trained, until we are reprogrammed, hallelujah, into doing what God asks us to do. Allow yourself to be transformed. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Allow yourself to be different. Be different. Be quirky. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I love it. Because that means I'm walking according to God's word. Amen. When I can be a little different and, and they have a the little mutter, amen, I'm in some right. If everybody's all loving on you, you might want to check your walk. Mm. Amen. We yeah. say that often up here, but it's real. Yeah. If they love on you, when you ain't got, they ain't got nothing bad to say, okay. I mean, it's good if they don't have nothing bad to say because you're not a bad person. But if they are not hearing God's word or seeing God's light in you or seeing the contours of God in you, check yourself. Amen. 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 We are different. Yes, we are. Crazy, spontaneous, hallelujah, praising Christians. Amen. And it's all good. Christians got to be, begin to be okay with that. In order for us to make a difference in what's going on in this craziness world, and every day we get a new reality of just how sick it is. Amen. Our presidential candidates are telling us and showing us that. It is sick. It is sick. So Christians, let's be different. Let's be bold. Let's hear the voice of God and act accordingly. Amen? Yeah. Be blessed by the change and the transformation that began first in you. In order for us to make a difference, be okay with God, of who has, God has you to be. Yes. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah? Thank you. I am done.